Yeah, we'll show up later. Uh, okay, Amy Bench, the director of A Line That Birds Cannot See. Come on up. Uh, Christopher Good, the director of Crude Oil. Uh, Will Goss, the director of Sweet Steel. Okay, uh, Alex Kavutsky, the director of Squirrel. And uh, the director and star of The Phantom 52, respectively, Jeff Marslett and Tom Skerritt. So welcome everyone. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm just gonna ask about you know the the beginnings of, of these films. Um, we'll start with uh, Amy. We'll start with you. With the line the birds cannot see. Um, how did you know this person? How did you meet them? I I wanted to tell a story from a female point of view from an immigrant, and so I started by interviewing people in the city that I lived in, which that I live in, which is Austin. And it took me about a year to find Adilsa, but I found her through. She is an activist um, with a, an organization in Austin that is empowering Latino and Latina youth. So that's how I met her, and she told my sto her story over the course of several months. Um, you know, Hollywood's been cranking out all these movies about suicide, and I figured I should get on the bandwagon <laughs> while it's still fun. No, um, I had started out trying to make any sort of slightly more ambitious short that didn't take place in a house I lived in or a house of my friends, but that didn't quite work out, so this went in the complete opposite direction, and it was the kind of thing that we could shoot almost entirely in a house with one actor, and in terms of thematically, it's kind of stuff that I can relate to in terms of how I feel like dealing with depression, it's more likely to be kind of this roundabout scenic route thing than necessarily some big cathartic uh, kind of life-affirming revelation that I think sometimes kind of crops up in stories like this. Um, I just had a friend who sort of had a relation or like a friendship similar to what's depicted in the film and thought it was, you know, fertile territory to mine perhaps. Um, uh, and then some of the, like the smell power stuff kind of came from a previous like a script I had written that focused more on that, that I had scrapped, and but kind of saw where maybe it could come back into this one. I have one. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, I just worked with Andrea, who was the lead of my short and something else, and I just really wanted to write her something, and for my friend Max, uh, who was the other lead, who was just moving to Los Angeles from New York, and I just kind of sat with their faces in my head until I thought of something very easy I could shoot, uh, like Will, just in two very small apartments in Los Angeles. I've got one too. Yeah. What do I feel? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're all bunched up down here. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I think it was around 1989, maybe 90, that I heard about the real whale. There's an actual whale that drifts around the ocean uh, for the last 25 years, speaking in a frequency other whales can't hear. and. Uh, I always found that super um, lonely and sad, but also sort of brave and persevering, um, that it's, he's still up there talking. And so this became the basis of what for me is maybe a horror story. I, I like telling stories. I like sitting around and talking with people too long and getting to know them. And this thought that you would reach out and try to speak to other people and no one would ever respond is, is terrifying and became to me, um, What's the difference in being a non-corporeal ghost or just being someone that everyone ignores? You're still a ghost. And uh, I melded those two ideas together um, into this ghost story of this lonely trucker and um, walked into getting Tom to do the voice, which, which he gave that great lonely and weathered but, um, but sort of brave character uh, to it. And um, once that fell into place, um, it was actually a blast to, to get to animate it and bring it to life. So, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you want to say something? Where are you? Huh? Oh, I was just going to ask you while you guys were down there um, with the mics, uh, if you guys could talk about your collaboration and how you, you know, what uh, sort of direction did Jeff 
Jeff give you uh, for creating this character? Well, I don't think I did it in an orthodox way. I don't do these things, and uh, I don't know. If, I don't assume anybody knows who I am or what I do for a living, but I'm an actor. You saw Citizen Kane, and I was an English writer, an English major who saw Citizen Kane said, I want to write and direct to that level, but I got to know how it was to act, so I acted and was <laughs> 50 years of good fortune. But in this situation, what I recognize now is this is the future in film. Are these short animated or short stories told in film? And uh, we started a company up in Seattle called Hey You Media, which is specifically toward iPad and iPhone viewing. And this is the material. Thank you guys for doing this, by the way. I love because it comes from stories and things that we've experienced, things we feel, so they're very authentic and um, perhaps sometimes too esoteric, but that's, that's okay too. You spend time being engaged, and where is this going? I don't get it perhaps, or where is this going? And it's beautiful and simple storyline. So overall, I'm involved basically as one who hopefully the next year or two can recognize, can get the standards of Hollywood out of the way of thinking because that's always where we go is right off the bat thinking about the standards. What will we do in Hollywood? Well, Hollywood is 100 years old. It's 100 years old. And when you age, you tend to repeat things and you forget things. And this is the new world, I, I feel very much that the work you guys have done, the storytelling, which comes from what you feel, which is ultimately what engages you, is what becomes part of you. you know, we're just all having to recognize that we, each of us are having individual experiences in this life that no one else in the history of mankind ever has had or ever will have. And they're unique and special that it makes each one of us certainly uh, the product of that. And that's what, we, that's what we write from. You see, you listen to somebody on PBS talking about a whale missing the other whales because he's going an octave or he's going a G, he's doing a G flat where all, most of them are doing C and D yep. sharp. And, uh, that complexity of that, why do these things happen, is often what we can resolve for ourselves by writing the damn thing to begin with. So the resolution is just in really accepting and appreciating your own independent individual experiences and, and daring to put them in front of other people. Uh, I really, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, this ain't, ain't about working as an actor. I've done it too far, to, too long to talk about that. Uh, I might a little bit about tonight, but um, I, I'm just so moved by what you guys are doing, the specialness of it, the, the nakedness of it, in some cases, is just, I'm very moved by it all. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Uh, he was very easy <laughs> to give direction to. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, we usually have a microphone here uh, for people who want to ask questions. I don't see one, but if you, uh, we'll, huh? I mean, I could loan this one out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll take questions from the audience if you raise your hand. But I'm going to ask a, a question going back down the other way um, for for uh, for Alex. Um, why 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 the rat race quote? <laughs> How did you land there? Um, well, so in the first draft of the script, that was a, a placeholder, and I never removed it. <laughs> it was, I just, uh, uh, well, uh, Max, the actor, uh, I was at a, a party with him like, like the weekend before, and Rat Race just came up and he just said he hadn't seen it, and I was just shocked. <laughs> and, and I thought if I kept it, he'd have to watch it, and he did, and he liked it. Uh, I, and I, 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 and I, it felt like it was a movie that everyone was aware of, but it was just, just slightly forgotten about. So it seemed like a good fit. Uh, and then, uh, 
Uh, Christopher, for uh, crude oil, um, you really played with the form on this one. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a really beautiful way to tell this story. It's so condensed, and and you're, there's you're giving a lot of information to the audience about these these two characters uh, in a way that I hadn't really seen in a short uh, before. And so I guess I just want to ask about how you sort of whittled this down, or did you have to cut a lot of ideas out of it to sort of tighten it a bit? Um, it's just a, it's, it's a really inventive piece of work. I just want to know more about the structure and the form of it uh, and the process of creating it. Um, we didn't... Uh, the, the, what you see is basically what was written. Um, within scenes here and there, um, some scenes were shortened, um, lines were cut out here and there, but um, it's pretty much how it is in the script. But the script was 26 pages long for a 15 minute long short, um, which is kind of typical with me. Um, um, but yeah. And I'll, uh, Will, the same kind of question. Um, you, you, I've seen your films uh, and you're, you're very good at just being very economical with the time in, in your film. Is that important to you? I mean, is it, is it, uh, do you always look to pare it down to just the bare five, what you can do in the bare five minutes that you have, or? Uh, yeah, maybe it's uh, impatience, but I kind of like having this self-contained story. And, and in this instance, I felt like the pace needed to be enough that you could be engaged and curious, but not enough that you'd be kind of antsy and bored. And for me, it's about like the most important four minutes in this guy's life, whether he knows it or not. And so I felt like, so long as the focus was scaled down to him taking at least one major step back, then that would be proportionally uh, amplified, I would hope. And uh, Amy, I want to know about your um, your influences as an animator. Um, do you draw from any particular? Uh, <laughs> Uh, style or influence or filmmaker when you're doing your animation? Well, I, I worked with an animator. I didn't animate Okay, myself. well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, um, I guess my next question then is, um, well, I mean, did you have something in your head that you wanted to get across to your animator, or did, was it, did the animator just kind of take it? Yeah, I, I didn't, when I first worked, started working on the film, I didn't know I was going to animate it, so it was probably something I didn't even think of, but when I got to know Adilsa, and she told me all about her life, that the stuff that I wanted to focus on felt really difficult to recreate in live action, and I didn't necessarily want to do that. So I decided to animate, and it's funny because Jeff and I have been friends for 15 years, and I didn't ever think I would play in a film festival with him with an animated film. <laughs> um, but here we are. Um, so I... I was looking around and I was looking at these animated GIFs and thought I want to just tell a really, I want to use very few images to tell the story and have it move kind of slowly so that you can really focus on her words. Um, and the animator lived in London and I lived in Austin while we worked on it, so it was a long distance. So it was really fun to like open your email and get new work. But I work as a cinematographer outside of um, making my own films, so it was really nice to collaborate with somebody on the visuals in a different way. Uh, do we have any questions out in the... Oh, there, there's a mic. Um, so if you have a question, uh, please. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, well, let's talk about, uh, see if you guys, I want to know if you guys can sort of envision a future for your characters, but you're, you're, you're just a real person. Can you tell us where Adilsa is today? Um, yeah, she's starting law school this summer. Um, she's working as, um, she worked in accounting of some sort, but she graduated from college. Um, and she's worked for a few years. She basically put herself through, she, she was home, there's a lot that didn't, you don't know about in her story, but she, she overcame a lot to put herself through college and um, supports her whole family, half of which is still in Guatemala and hasn't been back since she came 13 or 14 years ago. But she wants to go to law school and she wants to write a book about her life. 
no. Like, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that I, I, I it's an abstract question. that I like these characters, but I feel like um, this is the bit of their story that um, suits this. And I feel like if I were to make a feature along these lines, it would have to be in a different format and about different people to tell a different narrative to kind of tap into hopefully the same sort of emotional territory. But in terms of these two, I feel like they're right where they need to be, and I just hope to leave them there, sort of, hopefully. Um, this is also the end for uh, the crude oil characters. Um, I'm writing a feature, but it's completely unrelated. Uh, wait, is the question like what, what happens to these characters if they were real people if, and they keep going? Or like, do you want to try again? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Um, you know, they keep on living surreal lives, I suppose. Uh, that was just me stalling, because I don't have an answer either. Uh, I, what I like about shorts is like, you know, you do a snapshot and then it's the end and you never have to think about it ever again. Um, I guess uh, um, she would uh, keep living her life in a wheelchair and I don't know that life, but it seems very difficult. And uh, he will, uh, feel bad and then forget about it because that's that's uh that's what happens people do shitty things and then they move on who would have guessed that was the most depressing film in the lineup <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I i mean sort of like in amy's case i guess mine is a, a mine's a true-ish story since it is about a real whale so um i i do fully expect there to be some feature documentaries around the corner about this whale eventually, and someone's gonna gonna finally photograph it and see this real, uh, the real Phantom 52 whale, and then um, we'll just see how right I am. But uh, but I figure, for the time being, he's just gonna keep cruising around the ocean, um, trying to talk to people who can't hear him. Uh, well, again, I, my whole perspective of these things is story story based and stories that are inexplicable largely people will ask about the creativity why do you what made you do this what made you do that what's the actor director relationship it just happens right or it doesn't it's just we're talking how do you paint uh, a mural when you're told <laughs> you can't do it you can ask i will uh, diego riviera in the detroit institute of art for example was he was hired to do something. He chose to do a mural on the wall in the Detroit Institute of Art. Some said it was too communist. Others said it's a creative expression. And I saw, I remember when I was, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old, something like that. And I was so bowled over the power, the power of it. I didn't care whether it was uh, politically incorrect or anything else, it was the power of these things, the power of what these people are doing by what they felt, why it's inexplicable for you to talk about it. Uh, it's, it's really a, a, a challenge to answer your, the questions I've found over the years that people ask, because it's, you, you, it either works or you don't, and it comes from what we come to be from all of our life experiences. It's a, impulse it's an instinct and i'm sorry but that's about the only answer anybody can really respond to is how did he and i work with he asked if i would do this through his producer warren etheridge who's yeah, part of our company and i saw the animated feature and i thought this guy knows what he's doing he's going somewhere with this you know this is a simple thing i love the music to it very understated music that just kind of rides along with that whale that's moving out there and that truck that's moving down the road. So it's all a part of the balance of it that really ultimately touches us all. It's what engages us. It's what those things we don't know about whatever happened to that girl. It's engaging that we would be asked that, that you'd be asked that question. Not that you can answer it. In you most cases you can't. Answers. So it's yeah. just a matter of we feel it, and if we don't feel it, it's not going to work. If it, we really feel it, it's going to work. And the feeling of it is just simply trusting what you have to do and just put your foot down on the gas and be Ray Charles singing his heart out.
uh, we'll also answer any questions on behalf of the filmmakers that aren't here. So if anyone has any Danya's Day questions or <laughs> sudden birth or anything, we'll try. Budget, what they shot it on, anything. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, got, uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs> it's, this, is a, this is unbelievable to have you guys here. <laughs> um, so again, I want to remind you all to um, vote on your ballot. Uh, just tear, give a tear through your favorite film and give it to the person out there who's going to collect them. We do have to clear the theater, so please, if you have questions, they'll be in the lounge area to answer those questions. Please don't come up to the stage. Just go to the lounge. They will be there. And thank you all for coming. Have a great day.